Yes people, what is good? I am BA back once again with another reaction in the Black Metal series. This is episode 5 of season 4 and it is called Metalhead. Have no idea what this is about, I've got a few ideas on my head, I was thinking about it when I heard the title but yeah, zero idea what this may be about so I'm interested and looking forward to seeing what it's got in store for me. So without further ado, let's get into it. Metalhead, episode 5, season 4, let's check it out. And see what it's saying to it. Straight away opening with just some incredible scenery. Reminds me of certain areas in Scotland, some of that scenery there. You know you're the only one who can stand these things. Well, the only things left. Oh, they're all right, those sweets. They're not my go-to, but if they were all that were there, I'd have one. Pigs have all gone. Dogs took care of them. Dogs took care of them. This isn't some post-apocalyptic story again, is it? So it'll be your snout the same height as your asshole. No, snout. You're still trotting about gazing up everybody else's assholes all day long. Don't judge pigs on their nose-to-asshole society, saw. There's clearly a reason they've dumped you in the back seat. Yo, the choice for black and white in this episode is making every single image proper pop, like it looks incredibly filmed. I can give it a go. You're not gonna be long. Five minutes, Max. Oh no, what are they trying to make him do? He's got, what, days? Well, if what's in there makes those days easier. So are they stealing medicine for a dying man, maybe? There'll be other stuff in there. Batteries. All sorts. Okay. Nice. Batteries are some good shit. Who doesn't like a battery? Better than not having a battery. You batteryless fuck. With your clockwork mobile phone and your dildo that has a string cord you need to pull out to create a vibration. <laughs> Don't know why I'm hating on people without batteries all of a sudden, but you know, fuck those guys. Just looking at how they're dressed and the fact that a few of them have backpacks, I don't know. This does give me the vibe of post-apocalyptic. But maybe they're just hobos. Oh, here we go. Creepy technology time. What you got this week, Black Mirror? Well, I'm making a lot of assumptions, but if this is post-apocalyptic, a warehouse full of dope shit is definitely the sort of place you want to be breaking into. What is my man doing outside in the van, though? I've always got a billion questions in the first 20 minutes of a Black Mirror episode. You know what I'm like. I do apologise. It must be annoying. I get that she's looking for something specific, but I would suggest they literally just go through this place box by box. There'll be all sorts of useful stuff in here. And there must be some sort of oppressive, totalitarian or otherwise threat to them because they're doing something that is just and noble. There's somebody who's got a few days left to live and they're getting something to aid his passing, whatever that may be. So that's not like an evil mission. What the fuck is that? Looked like a shrapnel bomb. Just as I was about to say, there must be sort of some sort of evil force. They're evading here. There was me thinking the creepy technology was outside. No, no. Fuck what that guy's doing in the van. It's these drones that are the creepy thing. Just fucking killed him. What? And again, this is so close to home, man, because Boston Dynamics have drones that look exactly like this. If you type in Boston Dynamics mule drone, you will see this exact thing, basically. And the mule ones are slightly bigger. They could have literally miniguns mounted to the tops and all sorts of horrible weaponry, tracking systems, etc. When drones replace humans for military and police, it will be a creepy time. Oh, no. Fuck! That thing is fucking relentless! I was just about to go into a mad conspiracy theory saying to myself like imagine how crazy it would be if it was that guy who hacked into the drone and killed his own friends and maybe that will be the twist but you know, him getting shot in the back of the head just flung that interesting thought out the window. Way to get shot and ruin my thought, dick. Fuck! And the drone can drive cars, great. 
I mean, what chance have you got against something that can fucking chase you down, shoot you, and if you get in a car, can also drive a car? I would tell this drone to go fuck itself, but it would probably literally be able to do it, spawning a second drone. And then you've got a two drone problem instead of a one drone problem. And even worse, the second drone is a product of incest, self-incest. Gross. I can't believe how relentless this thing is. The design of it's creepy as well, because it's almost like somewhere between the mule drones they have and like a scarab beetle or something. Oh shit. I'm not exactly sure what the benefit of choosing black and white for this episode is, but like I said, it's certainly making it memorable and all the images look beautiful. How do you even stop it? Like, my first two thoughts would be water or electricity, but just blunt force trauma, I can't see it doing nothing. See, I think it survived that. If I was her, I would fucking run and not look down. Yeah, I knew it. Again, maybe the suggestion of, like, the scarab beetle shape of it made me think it'll be really hard to crush and shit. It's been designed to be, like, resistant to blunt force. Oh, his leg's stuck. It won't be stuck for long. And also, what kind of future is it when people who are trying to get medicine for the dying person, like, obviously those drones or security, fair enough, and those people are trespassing, fair enough, but at what point has the law decided these drones that are set for security purposes are allowed to just shoot on sight and then hunt down and shoot fleeing suspects even long after they've left the premises? I don't know if they're going to go into it in the episode, but it seems like something has went very wrong with government or policing or something. Well, very wrong or. Ah! <gasps> oh shit. So that thing, that sort of cluster grenade that initially went off was full of little trackers. That's a creepy, creepy weapon. Because not only is it relentless and all this other shit, but its first move is to put a tracker in you so it knows exactly where you are till it kills you. <gasps> That was some Rambo shit. Yeah, get that right away from you, good call. And make sure you didn't get hit anywhere else, because it fired out quite a few of those little things. Looking back, thank God the black dude got shot straight away. He got hit with like 20 of them. That thing would have been hunting him down to the old folks home when he's 90. Alright, so it did only hit her with one if it's following the tracker that's in the bottle on the river. That's good news. She's safe. For now. And my other thought is, you know, after seeing the B episode is, you know, this is just one of these things. What if we come across a pack of them? An army of them? She is so fucked. Jesus Christ, this episode has beautiful scenery. I don't know who is responsible for the cinematography in this episode, but they are stone cold killing this shit. Please fucking pick up. You wouldn't even feel safe communicating on the radio, because if the drones are smart enough to drive cars and shit, they're smart enough to answer a radio or hack into the radio signal. Can you hear me? Just whistle. Don't say anything. Yeah, I thought so. I would have had complete radio silence if one of these little shits were hunting me down. We don't know how long it had been in there. It got Tony and Clark. And this is also why artificial intelligence is becoming so dangerous, because the things they could potentially man are becoming more scary, such as drones like this, you know, unmanned fighter jets, etc. Just now, if an artificial intelligence was smart enough to hack into all available machinery, you'd be looking at a formidable force on land and in air you would be having to deal with, especially when it sent them drones to mobilise factories to make more drones. It's a slippery slope. You do not want an AI get in control of robots, I'll tell you that. It stuck me with the tracker, but I managed to get it out. Well, if she's smart enough to know it will be tracking her, why the fuck did she even decide to do this radio call? Yes, obviously, she needs to let people know that there's been a, you know, emergency situation, but get the fuck out of Dodge first. Keep moving. The message to Graham. <laughs> Just, I love it.
No, I'm going to say to Graham, she could have probably got away, but she ended up giving me a 20 minute diatribe while still within range of the dog that had just killed her two friends. She could have easily have just jogged away a good two miles down the road to make that radio call, well out of range of the dog's tracking devices, but no, no. You know her, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> One problem this technology currently has is battery life. I wonder if this is set in a time where that is no longer going to be an issue or if at some point this thing is going to need to go somewhere to get some juice. It's probably got like a standby mode, a solar way to get some energy back, it's probably got all sorts of shit. And I guess we should be thankful it seemingly can't communicate with other drones because if it could uh, in some way be connected to the other dog drones, imagine if it just sent out a signal to them all. Oh, it can't climb a tree. That seems like a bit of a design flaw. Might as well have just used a normal dog and gave it a gun. You can't do it. Your arm's fucked so you can't climb the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta enjoy her taking such pleasure from the failure of the drone. Yeah, that's it, went into standby mode, I guess. So it's just ready to play the waiting game, and she will have to come down sooner or later. Would be really hard to get to sleep on a tree trunk. For the exact reason this show has just demonstrated. I wouldn't be able to fall asleep on one. I would definitely roll off in my sleep and break my neck. I would start trying to make friends with a drone, I'd be like, almost slipped there, you almost got me, false alarm, I'm going back to sleep, go back to sleep, go back to standby, you're wasting battery, it's cool. The one thing I noticed from that moment though, was that it only became alerted to the noise, and I think she's just noticed the same thing. Welcome back. Is she just trying to run its battery down by doing this? It's not a bad idea. I think she'll run out of stuff eventually. She'll need to start stripping bark off of that tree. Four, three, two, one. She sounds absolutely exhausted. Has there been a time jump? I wonder how long she's been up this tree. And yeah, I think that battery went from four to three there. And She's a good shot. Get her on the basketball team. Now, has it just stopped responding to the taunt or has it ran out of battery? If it stopped responding to the sound, maybe this is her chance to actually drop down herself. If it's just adapted its strategy, it took it about a thousand hits to its dumb little head before it learned. <laughs> Did it actually work? It seems like it's just shut down. I mean, I'm so anxious because I don't think it's going to be this easy for her, but if this has worked, that's amazing. Oh, you can just tell by the close-up the little shit isn't done yet. Yeah, that was its battery ticking back up. I don't know if it can solar charge or something or just being in a passive standby state will regenerate battery. Don't know what sort of technology it's working with here, but it's definitely going to be back on its feet shortly. This woman needs to stop being frantic, stop making loud noises and just ninja step out of there casually. The little thing's got no chance. Ah oh, shit, here he comes. If I'm thinking again, as always, like a writer, I'm thinking what are potential ways she could have a chance against this thing. And I guess the fact it's missing a limb has got to come into play somehow with like a mobility flaw at some point or something like that. You would be understandably novice as fuck fishing for the keys knowing there's a little dog devil robot thing on your ass. Oh. 
Okay, that's a understandable logical progression. There's no car keys on the keychain, but you think I could use the keychain to get into the building and maybe find the car keys inside. Understandable, but just lock the front door behind yourself when you go in, please. Okay, closing it is fine. Closing it is acceptable. After we've seen the warehouse scene though, I just expect to see another one of these dogs like somewhere in this place now. Like they're guarding all abandoned places. Jesus Christ, who the fuck do the Black Mirror producers know? Who are their friends? Like the 1%. This is another billionaire's kitchen they're showing us. How many fancy interiors do Black Mirror want to display throughout their show? Look at this shit. If I ever got invited round to someone's house and it looked like this, I would pee on the floor upon entry on principle alone. Okay, I'd say my bedroom's maybe in a little bit better nick than these guys though. All my corpses are cut up into six segments and neatly placed into double lined bin bags. Gross. Corpse gun, gross. It's gonna be like decomposing finger cells on the under barrel and shit. <laughs> Hey, worth it for the car keys though. Totally worth the decomposing finger cells for the car keys. There's probably more on the car keys. Embrace the decomposing finger cells if anything. Well, a traditional gun, again, like I said, wouldn't have been my first thought. My first thought would be stuff like water, electricity, fire, like there must be an elemental weakness to it. You know, I've played fucking Pokemon, this thing can't have all the elements unlocked, there's got to be one of them that fucks it up. And you would assume that if it's been militarily designed and combat ready, then it will have metal which is bulletproof. I could be completely wrong, maybe one shot will just dead this thing on site, but you would assume that the finished model would be pretty resistant to the main thing it would be coming up against in the field if its primary weapon is also a pistol. That's clearly a close combat weapon, so it should have close combat armour, one would assume. I wonder if we're gonna get to see this person she's actually scrambling to get all this medicine for. I guess if she makes it back alive we will. That's on her. It's on you if we get to see that. So get moving, bitch. You've got a final scene we need to be watching. Ow. This is no time for owls. This little fucking hypocrite. This thing was literally built and designed to guard a warehouse from people breaking and entering. Look at it go. Little lock picking shit completely going against its primary directive and programming. He's essentially a low level burglar. I don't care how high tech his little device is. He might as well be outside a window with a brick. Oh look at him. Checking for the silverware are you? Hmm, steel, worth nothing. Do you think maybe they went with the black and white because the drone didn't look realistic when it was coloured and they saw that the drone looked far more real when it went black and white? Maybe that's the reason. Maybe because it's a bloodier than usual episode with the people getting shot in the head early on? Could also just have been an artistic choice, I guess. Looks dope either way. This is the Halloween remake we wanted but never got. <laughs> he had the blackest eyes. Almost as if his eyes were not eyes, but a black sensor. Now that is a good idea. That is a genius move. That is so clever. He's fucked. Quick coat of paint, he's fucked. You know who these drones will have a hard time against? Guarding against walls from being graffitied. Those graffiti artists get a great range on their spray cans. Don't know why she's panicking. The thing is clearly done for. Like, actually done for. Look at it. I mean, will it figure out a workaround to this? Every time, just like the last. Yeah, it's just relying solely on sound now, I guess. Look, I know the backing instrument gets a little bit repetitive, but it's still a classic. 
Oh shit! I was completely wrong, and she did just John Wick the fuck out of it. I suppose the sensor for vision and shit wouldn't have metal protection. Surely that second shot's got to have killed it. That's two headshots. If she doesn't get a kill with two headshots, it's unfair. If it's died and shot out them tracking chips, you would assume it is now also alerted other dogs. Jesus Christ, how many of these things did it get in her? Oh my god, that is so brutal. I mean, she's going to have to do it. This is going to be rough to watch. Maybe we're starting to see why this was in black and white after all. And I'm genuinely worried what's going to show up because it can't be shooting out the trackers or for itself to still track it. It's dead. I hope the one in her neck isn't like in her artery or something like that. Otherwise, you know, if she removes it, she's dead. This is just to say that I'm, I'm not coming back. Ah, fuck. So I'm sorry to Ali and that she should give Jack a kiss for me. Fucking hell, man. I've been getting so used to the happy endings in Black Mirror episodes. <laughs> Fucking grisly. Ah, that's a rough ending. And yeah, just as I thought, we're seeing the other drones approach, so she would have been done for one way or the other. And it's even more powerful, I think, that they stuck with just the one in the episode and then, you know, at the very end hinted at more approaching because it just shows the power and formidability of one. So imagine a pack of them. That's them finding the guy from the initial robbery. They were stealing a teddy bear. That is the most heartbreaking shit. Charlie Brooker, you son of a Bitch. And it's the same white bear from the white bear episode, also noticed. Okay, and that was episode 5 of season 4 of Black Mirror Metalhead, and I will be back in just a minute with my thoughts on that. So, Metalhead, what did I think of that? I thought that was an incredible little story. First of all, I want to say I really liked the choice of black and white. Again, I've been theorising as to why that might have been. There's multiple reasons it may have been. Again, it might have just also have been an artistic choice, but regardless, I think it worked really well with the episode and made the ending even more bleak. It matched the bleakness of the way this episode went, to be honest. I'm still literally on a downer from the ending of this episode. I don't know if you can tell, but I, like I said, I've been getting quite used to Black Mirror being a bit more upbeat as of late. And uh, yeah, this is just an absolute gut punch of a finish. So the technology we saw on display is obviously incredibly close to home because of the company Boston Dynamics who are working on several models of drone which are incredibly similar to this. One of the creepiest videos I've ever seen of drones thus far in the development of robotics is the military testing Boston Dynamics mule drones balancing ability you will be able to see this on YouTube and they're basically so it's walking and they are trying to kick it in the side to knock it over and its legs as it goes off balance from the kicks correct themselves in such a natural looking like if a deer was to go off balance sideways how a deer's legs would you know fumble to correct and the way it's able to correct and catch itself from going off balance and stuff like that there's obviously so many things going on underneath the hood with mimicking animal movements and all the physics being equated by the little computers inside it and shit it's getting to an incredibly creepy level and one of the few things that's holding these things back just now like i said is battery life but yeah what seems like a giant leap is sometimes only a few small steps away and i think these things becoming incredibly dangerous is only a few small steps away even though just now it may seem like a giant leap for example if these things first of all conquer the battery life problem and the very next day get integrated with one of the more modern artificial intelligences then get trained in a series of drills to make it incredibly efficient with its aiming and killing etc and then you know what do you have there it's like an unbeatable army and that's only a few little steps away so I find this particular type of robot incredibly scary because it will be one of the first to be militarized 
along with quadrocopter drones just now that fire missiles and shit these will be the next ones these will be the patrol ones the ones that are walking on ground level patrolling in packs maybe maybe with weaponry on their back missiles machine guns shit like that all sorts of tracking systems when i close my eyes and try and envision the next 50 years of this world you know assuming we survive that's the future of military and police to me these things weaponized armored and it's quite terrifying because you know it depends on who's programming them as to how ruthless they're gonna be and they made this woman throughout the episode look so tactical and resourceful and this thing seemed like there was just no way to stop it i thought it was genius when she was up the tree and realized that she could cause it to power up and power down again by hitting it with the sweets proper smart of her but she did make a slight error shortly after that because after she got down and escaped she made that radio call still within a close proximity of where that robot incident had taken place i don't know why anybody would do that you would get so far the fuck out of there before you even thought about saying a peep and at that point if she'd have just done that i feel like she would have survived so yeah i feel like she made a fatal error in making that radio call so close to the robot whether it was powered down or not and just when you think something is horrific charlie brooker truly knows how to make that shit next level horrific the reveal at the end that the box they were initially breaking into the factory to get to had teddy bears in it because remember they said you know to aid in their passing now at first i thought they were getting medicine to help the pain of someone who was dying of a disease or something but in actuality they were getting a teddy bear to help the aid of a terminally ill child that is fucking brutal and i also like the simplicity of it it was more of just an action chase episode it was one person's fight for survival against a killing machine you know it was the last act of a terminator movie or anything similar to that but just more based in realism but I really liked it for that sometimes an episode can tell a simple story it doesn't need to be all over the place it doesn't need to introduce a million characters but if it's done well it will always stick in your mind and I find this episode to be incredibly memorable on several levels but the main one being is that it's the first one that brings a focal point to this type of drone which is a very dangerous type of drone and it was a great acting performance by the lead actress as well I don't remember seeing her in anything previously but she did an amazing job in this episode she was basically the only on-screen human after the opening scene and she maintained my interest throughout the entire episode and i believe it's the finale of season four next week so i can't wait to see what charlie brooker has in store for me if you've liked this reaction click like subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this ring the bell to be notified as to when they drop if there's anything you want to talk about comment down below and share this around to anyone you think might appreciate it or want to watch these reactions along with us my patreon link is down in the description if you become a patron you get access to my blog you get access to these reactions are put on youtube a month and a half in advance and you also get access to full-length versions of everything i react to so consider becoming a patron it helps me and my channel out so much and until next time i have been ba peace